should see a move up in the very least back to the highs from 2020, early 2020. Yeah, so so based on what I'm seeing in the charts, and again, I'm a technical trader, I'm really more bearish on Bitcoin in the near term, so over the next six months or so, and then also bearish on the stock market based on the Fed tapering and, and potentially raising rates in 2022. Now, what I am bullish on is gold. Gold, I think, is going to be the biggest performer here in 2022, and you can see this beautiful wedge pattern for right here on the charts on the GL, uh, GLD or the gold, um, the gold commodity. And my guess is we're going to break out to the upside and you should see a move up in the very least back to the highs from 2020, early 2020. And I think even a potential 3000 price target on gold. And again, this is based on a lot of factors, but ultimately you have to look at the inflation numbers. I don't think inflation is going to go back to the 2% level. It's going to keep being a thorn in the side of the Fed. The Fed will taper, but ultimately people will rotate into gold. I do think it is the best performer in 2022. All right. Well, I guess uh, spoilers out of the way then. Hey, uh, gold's right. gonna gold's gonna be the winner. No, it's okay. I asked you that question first, so uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was on me. Gold's gonna be the outperformer. Let's talk about that. Don't you think that with interest rates potentially rising next year, and we'll talk about that. But suppose interest rates do rise, isn't that going to be a headwind on gold? Doesn't that mean real interest rates would also rise? Yeah, so, so interest rates moving up will be a slight headwind, but the question is why are interest rates moving up? Are they moving up because the economy is roaring and the Fed has to kind of tamper the economy or taper in that regard, or are interest rates going up because of inflation? And again, you know, from the input costs of labor, labor again being the biggest input cost to a business, we know that the demand for labor is epic right now. They're having to offer bigger and bigger salaries. That eventually gets passed through to the consumer, and therefore, again, you'll see inflation being the cause of higher interest rates. In addition, let's not forget the Fed just cannot raise interest rates unlimited amounts here. You know, maybe 2%, maybe two and a quarter is your max upside on the 10 year. And the reason for that is that the Fed at this point has to recognize the debt factor of the United States. They cannot, we cannot pay, you know, high amounts of interest on our debt or we'll go broke. And the Fed also cannot create a situation where the economy starts to spiral out of control. So I think you have upside in interest rates to two, two and a quarter percent, and then that's it. And then you still have persistent inflation, which triggers that gold move to the upside. So the dot plots indicate three right three rate hikes next year, totaling 75 basis points. Now, I've heard both sides of this argument. One, which is that they really cannot execute on what's expected. Even one basis, even 25 basis point uh, 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 of hikes would be too much and unaffordable, like you said. Yeah. And the other side of the argument is that the Fed has more leeway. Well, the, the Treasury at large, the, the US government does have more leeway than one may think. What's really going to be pressured is the, uh, the corporate side and retail consumers. Uh, the government actually does have more leeway to raise rates. So what do you think? Where do you stand on this debate? So I'm in the camp that the Fed does not have a lot of leeway here to do what they want, right? So so you already see them ta tapering where they're removing, I think it's $30 billion a month. They should be done with tapering by March of 2022. I think you'll get one interest rate hike next year, and that's it. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, the economy is starting to kind of falter, and they might even have to think about additional stimulus measures. So, you know, again, it's one of these things where, remember, when the Fed tapers, they're going to be removing a, a $1.5 trillion in dollars from the system just right there. If you raise interest rates, it's going to remove essentially this, you know, additional amounts. And that is going to put in a major, you know, depression point. Five. I wouldn't use the word depression. That's a little too drastic. But I do think it's going to create a, a kind of a rut for the economy where unemployment will go up. And then you know what the Fed's going to have to do? Their dual mandate, they're going to have to come out with and figure out stimulative measures. The economy will falter. Uh, can you expand on that? Why would the economy falter? Well, it's, it's just, I mean, think about the, the, the kind of the drug high that the market markets have been on because of all this, this infusion of capital from the Federal Reserve, right? I mean, we're coming off of people having more money. The government was sending out checks, interest rates at historic lows. The Fed was pumping in you know, $120 billion a month. And now the Fed is saying, okay, we have to take some of that back, not because they want to, but because they're being forced to because of inflation surging to what, 8% now on a yearly basis. And so this is going to put the, the economy in, in a little bit of an issue going into the next, you know, probably the next year or so where it's going to have to fight these, these lack of stimulus measures in the system. 
Okay, so let's talk about uh, the Fed uh, in a little more detail. They have indicated that rate hikes are conditional on two things. Their inflation target being met, well, it's been more than met. And the second, their full employment mandate being met. Mm -hmm. Do you think that side of their dual mandate has been fulfilled? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, when I look at it, I mean, when you see this many open jobs in the U.S., you have to be as the Federal Reserve say, OK, that unemployment, low unemployment metric has been met. But my fear, again, comes in as they continue to taper, as the economy kind of says, OK, we have less money in the system. Do valuations and stocks come down? I saw this ridiculous stat. I mean, it was an amazing stat recently talking about compared to 10 years ago, how much of the U.S. is now invested in stocks, which means that they've participated on this bull run in the market and they have a wealth effect. Well, my question is, what if the markets start to decline 10 or 20 percent and you have that wealth effect taken away and then consumers are spending less, which then translates into unemployment all around? And then where does the Fed sit? So, I mean, the Fed's in a box here. They remove too much liquidity from the system. You're going to create a recession and higher unemployment, which means they have to come back and fight it with more stimulus. And it's just it's a no win situation, but they put themselves in this box. Fight it with more stimulus. Mm-hmm. Okay, how are they going to do that after they've raised rates? They're going to they're going to reverse on that and lower rates again. How's that going to happen? They did it in 2018, right? I mean, that's really what happened. They they you know too late 2018 they started to inch rates up. The market dropped 20, percent and before you knew it, they were lowering interest rates again. So I think that's the situation. I mean, this is the this is the conundrum the Fed has faced is that they have that dual mandate, right? They have to pay attention to unemployment, which means you need the stock market to go up, but then also inflation, which again you have to kind of tighten the reins to get that inflation under control. So which one do they ultimately go with? I've always been someone who says that human nature says they want to you know, help people. They don't want to hurt people. The po- politics of the situation means that the pressure from the government is going to be on them to keep rates low and keep the, the system kind of inflating. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a win-win either way. It's a lose-lose, but they'll probably err on the side of stimulus in the future. Okay, interesting. Well, given that, uh, let's assume that the Fed shares your outlook. Let's just suppose that they have that in the back of their heads. Uh, they have a Garrisol away somewhere in the Fed working for them. They're probably thinking the same thing, and they're probably thinking, okay, why why bother raising rates at all then if we're going to have to stimulate the economy again? Well, well, again, you know, as long as they can do it. So first of all, they have to fight inflation right now, right? 8% inflation, that's hurting the middle income, lower income um, individuals in the U.S. So they have to come out. I also think, I think I even mentioned it last time we were on that it was my guess that Biden reappointed Powell with the objective of getting inflation under control as a large portion of his voters are likely that middle income, lower income population. So, so, you know, he has to show a good foot here. He has to get inflation under control before the midterms, but ultimately, which is going to win all of a sudden, if you see unemployment run up to eight or 10%, is, is it still going to be, oh, well, we have to get inflation under control, or is it, oh, we have to help all these people without jobs get jobs? And I think it's going to be the stimulative side that will win out in the longer run. Interesting. Okay, so let's assume that they do hike by uh, 25 basis points. So that's one rate hike, as you have predicted. What's going to happen to the bond market? Yeah, I mean, the bond market, again, I, I think the max upside in the, on the 10 year personally is, is two to two and a quarter percent. I would be shocked if it goes up much more. And if it does, you wonder what effect it's going to have on the overall system. So I'm in the camp that, yes, I do think at some point we will break above that recent. Well, it's now not so recent, but 1.75 percent high on the 10 year. But I do not think the Fed will want it to get too high based on the U.S. debt and based on other factors that it will influence. 